Yo, what's going on guys? We are back today for another unexpected video because Kabam just seems to drop all their information at one point and honestly, I really hate how they do that. I <laughs> It really bugs me because I'm making videos back to back, you know, breaking down Act 8 rewards and now the next Battleground season when this could have been announced weeks ago, <laughs> you know? But whatever, at least we have the information. Let's go ahead and get into it. So Battlegrounds, the next season... Let's go ahead and uh, get into this. So, in the name of keeping things fresh, we'll be changing our approach to the meta. For the past six seasons, we have had both Gladiator Circuit metas and the Victor Track meta utilize the same attacker benefiting buff. Going forward, only one meta a season will have an attacker benefiting buff, and these will connect to the current saga. This is very important. Generally speaking, the meta without an attack tactic will be in the last two weeks of Gladiator Circuit. But due to the sentiment around Ex Magica, we swapped the order this season. So going forward, it, Battleground's meta is going to be changing. The attacker buff will be for the first meta, but then the final meta of the Gladiator Circuit will be separate, which I really like. I really like that. Uh, we also have an update to Battleground Solo Event and Milestone Rewards. Yeah, we're going to get into that. It's, it's juicy. But I really, really, really like these changes. Um, I don't, like, hate the attacker benefiting buff, but I, I think this is perfect. I think having that active for the first meta, and then the final meta just being something completely separate, that's, yes, yes, I really like that. Ah, that's great, man. That is so great. But for this season, it's, it's not going to be like that. Going forward, that's how it's going to be. But for this season, the final meta is going to be Ex Magica. So let, let's break down the metas for next season. So for the victory track, we have Bob and Weave, which is all of the defender's attacks are guaranteed critical hits. It's disabled for 10 seconds if the attacker dodges or intercepts the defender. So like just dexing their attack should disable that, which is very simple. Uh, and the defender can also land crits through the block. But if you just dodge, dex them one time, you save that for 10 seconds. Okay. And then using the Dexterity Mastery, or yeah, Counter-Strike, every time you dex, you just gain a Fury. At 10, they go unblockable. Very simple. Dauntless, we've, it's just starting the, the Spirit Gate at 50%. That's been in every meta for a long time. And then so once you get from the Victory Track to the Gladiator Circuit, uh, the Bob and Weave stays... Oh, no, it changes a bit. The cooldown goes from 10 seconds down to 8 seconds. So your cooldown won't last quite as long. Uh, and then looks like they're unblockable for less time. Oh, but it triggers at seven Furies instead of 10. But you also get more attack rating per charge. Double the attack rating actually per charge. Interesting. And they're unblockable for three less seconds. So honestly, that sounds kind of better. <laughs> I like that more. Uh, and then we have Fisticuffs, with neither champion can activate buffs or debuffs for the first 20 seconds of the fight. Dude, that is big. That is huge. Do you guys know what that means? That means for the first time in quite a while, we have a recoil meta or suicide mastery meta, whatever you want to call them. Basically, the masteries that increase your attack rating by 60%. Now, the reason why those masteries, you know, aren't used normally is because they put a big health drain on your defenders plus recoil. And now with the changes to Battlegrounds, you know, before it was worth it or it could be argued it was worth it because, you know, when you finish a fight in 30 seconds, you used to get more points. But now you get less points for time and more points for health. So ever since that change, you know, which Kabam has never talked about again, I wish they would, uh, but ever since that change, you know, suicide metas are basically non-existent unless there's a way to pretty much mitigate all the downside of the, those masteries. And Fisticuffs pretty much does that. The only thing Fisticuffs won't mitigate is recoil. And, you know, you can totally play around that. You just don't throw specials or throw special threes. You know, you'll never take recoil damage. Uh, and your defenders are going to be taking recoil damage but they're going to have 60% more attacks. You know, if you have seven stars with the block uh, penetration stat focus with Suicide Mastery, you know, they're just going to be doing more and more block damage. My Bullseye is going to be doing more damage. Um, yeah, Fisticuffs, bro. Full recoil meta. Um, because your defenders won't start with the poison or the bleed. You won't start with the poison or the bleed on attack. Yeah. 
So, but that's for the first two weeks, and, and then it shifts, and then we get a whole X Magicka thing. So this is essentially the current alliance war tactic that nobody likes. <laughs> but when, when I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, no, I, I hate this current war season. Like, I don't want to deal with this in Battlegrounds. But it's not as bad. Uh, the So basically what, what makes Magic Thief so terrible is they gain stackable, indestructible passives. I won't let me uh, highlight this. That's annoying. But yeah, they gain indestructible passives. Now in war... Uh, before, at the start of the season, it was, they capped out at seven. So they could have seven of these indestructible passives. Um, now, I think in war, it's capped at five. And here for Battlegrounds, it's capped at three. So three is not that bad. You know, that is so much more manageable than, like, seven. So three, okay. Uh, and, you know, actually, I didn't read these yet. I was just assuming it's working the same as Alliance War. But let, let's take a read to make sure we know. So, um, with X Magicka, if the attacker has the X Magicka tag, performing a well-time block or striking the opponent's block with light, grants them an indefinite 10% prowess passive, max stack 7. When a Magic Thief Defender activates an indestructible effect, while the attacker has a tactic prowess or vice versa, one of each effect is instantly removed. These effects cannot be affected by ability actually. Okay, so yeah, that sounds like it works the exact same as War. Let's make sure this one does too. Uh, Magic Thief Defenders gain a stackable indestructible passive every 20 seconds. 20 seconds, all right, that sounds a lot longer, I think, than War. I think it's I think it's faster in War. Uh, or when their attacks are dodged, evaded, or miss. Or maybe it is 20, I'm not sure. Uh, but Max Tax 3. Uh, and this timer is paused during the Defender's specials and for 0 0.5 seconds when struck by an X Magicka attacker with an active prowess effect. As long as this indestructible passive is on the Defender, they gain 5% of bar power when hitting the attacker's block. One indestructible passive is removed whenever the attacker well time blocks. Uh, these effects cannot be affected by barely accuracy. So, I, I think the way it works in war is you need to be X Magica to counter the magic thief. And I, I think it's going to work the same. The only thing that's kind of throwing me off a little bit here is that it says one in trouble passage removed whenever the attacker both times blocks, which is how it works for the X Magica champs. But here it specified the X Magica attacker. And here it didn't. So I wonder if any champion will be able to remove them or if you need to have the tag. I'm not entirely sure yet. Because like if you just because think about that, you know, like if, if they have a whole bunch of X or, or, or of uh, Magic Thief defenders and you don't have enough X Magicka attackers just from getting an unlucky draft or something. And you, you simply lose, you know, if, if you can't fight the Magic Thief defenders without the attacker. You, you'll, they're literally, they will literally just be indestructible and you'll do zero damage. It sucks. So I, I'm not sure about that. We're going to have to see. But the, the one good thing uh, is that, you know, with the recent update to the game, with Battlegrounds, actually, you can see the rank and SIG of champions now. So if it's like a rank through seven star, it'll say rank three, it'll say the SIG. But, and that's great. But another thing that they added was a little X to show if they're like X Magica. So that's, I'm really glad they added that. That's gonna, that's basically a prerequisite if they're gonna be doing this meta. I'm really glad that they added that icon so it makes drafting easier. Uh, but then we also have a power play node every 15 seconds, whichever champion has the least amount of power is fate sealed for six seconds. And then we also have roll with the punches. Each time the defender receives a stun debuff, they reduce the duration of the Further stun debuff by 20% unless the attacker has an active buff. Prowess passive when the stunned debuff is inflicted. And Dauntless. Yeah, so those that's the meta for the next uh, season of Battlegrounds. So those are two metas. Very interesting. Now let's talk about the solo event because this got buffed, man. Finally, for the first ever time, this has been permanently buffed. It had been increased for like a couple of se individual seasons, but it always went back to regular after that. So note the increased quality of 6-star shards, quantity of 6-star shards in the top half of the table, and the juicy addition of 6-star nexus crystal. Okay, I don't know if I would call a 6-star nexus crystal juicy in 2024, but okay. 7-star uh, shards and titan shards in the bottom half. That Now that is juicy. Titan shards are juicy. So 
We got six star shards, six star shards, six star shards, six star shards, six star shards. And then we have a six star Nexus Crystal. And then at milestones 10 and above, we get it, we're getting 1,507 star shards. Which is awesome, dude. It's really awesome. So 7,507 star shards here. And then the final milestone of 300,000, which is what it's always been, is 2,500 Titan shards. Dude. Yes. This is, this is a big win in my eyes, dude. Just, just guaranteed Titan shards every single battleground season now as long as you play enough that i love to see it i love to see it that's great but you know what the crazy thing is man um the crazy thing is that you know like i said these have never been permanently buffed but they were individually buffed for at least two seasons that i can remember i think i think it was two and for those two seasons you know the final reward was five thousand titan shards you know, and that's like five plus seasons ago. So five plus seasons ago, you know, there was more Titan Shards than there is now. Which when you think about it, kind of odd. But but at least, you know, this is permanent. This is permanent. Every single season now, we have guaranteed Titan Shards that we can acquire. I And I really like that. I like permanent ways to gather Titan Shards. So, um, yeah. Could it have been better? Yeah. But is this good? Yes, definitely a whole lot better than what it was. Uh, just you know, half a seven star. Uh, what is that? An eighth of a Titan? You know, not bad. All right, and then here, this is this is pretty big. So the ev solo event ranked rewards were also buffed. So no really additions to the ranked rewards. Titan charge for the top 10,000 summoners in the addition of seven star six notes. Wow, okay, let's open this bad boy up here. So... Let's see. We got. We do have seven star six stones. Oh, you have to place in the top ten for that. Wow, Jesus. So number one gets ten seven star six stones, and top ten get five. Oh, and the, no, never mind. We have six stone crystals too. That's just for the generics. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I like that. I, th I thought that was literally it. Like really, fifteen six stones. That's it. <laughs> but no, there's more. Okay, so here we have four. Top 10, they're also getting five seven star six stone crystals. Okay, so they're still getting 10, but it's just half generic, half random. Okay, for top 30, 10 six stone crystals. For top 107, six stone crystals. Top 255. And for top 503, six stone crystals. Okay, and then we just have six star awakening gems. Why? Why are these even a thing still? I don't. I don't know. We have some six star six stones. More six star six stones over here. Six star shards over here. But then we get to some really good stuff here. Well, seven star shards have been there. I don't think those have gotten increased too much. But the introduction of Titan shards is a big one. So let's see. Let's go from top, bottom to top. So five thousand to ten thousand gets you one thousand Titan shards. Okay. Top five thousand gets uh 1500 titan shards top 2000 gets 2000 titan shards uh top 1000 2500 titan shards top 500 3000 titan shards top 250 3500 titan shards top 100 4000 titan shards top 35000 titan shards top 10 7500 titan shards and number one 10000 titan hero shards half a full titan interesting okay Again, you know, just a guaranteed way to get Titan Shards. You know, this one's a little bit less guaranteed because you need to put up enough points. And who knows what the points are going to be, you know, especially for this first season after this is buffed, uh, which I'll talk about in a sec. So who knows what you're going to need. But yeah, definitely a whole bunch better than what it is right now. So absolutely love to see all this, man. And then next season, we're also going to be seeing a similar buff like this the alliance side of things so the alliance event will be getting buffed next season so with all this in mind you know what is the best decision for your elder marks so as you can see here i am nearly maxed on my elder marks uh 8445 i believe he's cap out at 9000 yeah it shows the cap there and i'm sure a lot of you guys are in a similar position 
Um, and I'm sure a lot of people in general are in a similar position of having a lot of Elder Marks right now because we've known for a while that this buff was coming. So what is the best course of action with your Elder Marks? To maximize the effort that you put into Battlegrounds and the rewards that you're getting out of it with the Elder Marks that you have. So my advice, my plan, what I'm really going to be doing is I'm not going to be going all in this season with Elder Marks. I'm going to use some for sure. Um, but definitely not all of them. I definitely want to save at least half for next season when the Alliance side of things are buffed as well so I can help contribute to my Alliance, get those rewards. Um, and, and also, I think that next season, the cutoffs won't be as high for the solo event. I think this first season, once this solo event is buffed, we're going to see, uh, you know, scores shoots maybe an all-time high or at least an all-time high since they were they were buffed individually before. Um, but I, I think the, the cutoffs are just going to skyrocket now with the addition of Sig Stones, Titan Shards. I, I think it's going to be really bad for th this first season, you know, with the buff um, because it's brand new. People got Elder Marks to burn people are going to be burning them. So I, I think it's wise to not go all in on this season. Spend like half your Elder Marks here and save the other half for next season. Also keep in mind that, you know, we get a fair chunk of Elder Marks too each season. So use those. I'm going to use those about half of what I have right now and then save the other half for next season. So I think that's going to be my course of action. Probably shoot for around... 420 to 500,000 points for the solo event next season. Maybe something like that. Depends how much I, I decide to play. For this last season, uh, I hit 310,000. And I, I'd used some Elder Marks. I just used, literally just used enough Elder Marks so I didn't cap out. That's really my only goal. Um, so, yeah, next season, definitely going to try to hit more points. Probably like over 400,000, 400, 500,000, I'm thinking. See where that lands me. Where, where where would I guesstimate that would land me? Probably, let's see. Let's say I got 500,000 points. Half a mil. I feel like that would maybe get me top 2,000. Maybe. And I'd be fine with that. As long as I get top 10. As long as I'm getting some Titan Shards, you know. It's cool. As long as I don't place out of top 10,000, you know, I'll be fine. As long as I'm getting some Titan Shards, I'll be happy. But uh, yeah, that's that's my take, my advice on, uh, you know, the new season. Uh, and since it's going to be, you know, so crazy with the whole X magica and Magic Thief side of things, I will definitely be making some videos to help you guys out. Talking about, you know, the best attacker tactics, the best uh, defense defenders with this defensive tactic, strategies, all kinds of stuff. Because I feel like this meta is going to be challenging one for for a lot of people myself included <laughs> i feel like it's not going to be easy but um i think i'm going to try to go kind of hard next season we'll see we'll see i'm excited i'm pretty excited but yeah that's going to go ahead and do it for this video breaking it all down drop a like if you guys enjoyed the video uh we're going to have some battlegrounds rewards coming on this weekend you know once we get the rewards also going to show you guys my final match of the season to secure or to fumble celestial five so be on the lookout for that uh, i'm gonna be spending a ton of trophy tokens i've been so broke on them but we should be getting a fat chunk coming in soon so yeah be on the lookout for that thank you guys so much for watching this video what do you think of the nodes for next season of battlegrounds what do you think of the changes going forward with the attacker buff in the first week and then not having that for the final two weeks let me know what you think about all that i'd love to hear your guys feedback and read all your comments thank you so much for watching hope you enjoy peace out